Alpha 007, turn right, heading 185, reduce speed 182 knots. 185 on the heading 180 on the speed Alpha 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 knots to 40 me. 160 to 4, Hello there guys, Matt here, hope you're all well. And a different type of video today. A lot of you have been asking about my clouds in previous videos, so I figured that I'd tie in what sort of clouds I'm now using within FSX and also the weather settings that I'm using within Active Sky Next. Since the video that I first made on Active Sky Next uh, just over a year ago, so December of last year, um, they, no, December of not last year, the year before, they brought out several service packs and hot fixes and stuff like that, and we have an array of new features now. So that video about Active Sky and all of my settings is pretty defunct because nothing really works with it anymore. So I decided today to do something a little bit different, show you what my settings are, and then hopefully you can get the, the same results as me. I'm going to make a separate video on my FSX config and the settings from that because I don't really understand why people don't believe me when I say I haven't changed anything in my FSX config. There's a lot of people now saying, oh your FSX looks different, it's performing different, what have you done, can I have this, can I have that, can I have the other. Ugh. It's driving me insane. I haven't changed anything, but just to prove that I haven't changed anything, I'm going to make a video and show you exactly what I have set, and it's going to be the exact same as the other video. So, there you go. Anyway, so, uh, maybe a month ago, just under a month ago, Rex released something called Soft Clouds, yeah? I'll leave the, the link below the, the video so you can go check it out. It, uh, it was about $10 I think, so not very expensive at all. Now, you may know that I don't use Rex products, period. I don't like them. I feel that they just look too unnatural. It's all very overexposed and yeah, it's, it's not my cup of tea. However, they have changed their style with these new Rex clouds. And I was streaming and someone pointed them out to me and I checked them out. I just kind of blindsided it a little bit. I wasn't really you know, I, it's rare because I didn't really care. I was like, okay, whatever. But then I looked at the screenshots and I was like, actually, this does look pretty awesome. So I bought it, downloaded it, installed it, and I was amazed. I was absolutely amazed. Essentially, let me just open the program for you. Essentially, it is the same interface as Rex4 Texture Direct. But what they've done is they've just bundled it for clouds. You do not need Rex4 Texture Direct installed for this to work. You can just run it as a standalone, which is what I do. And it has just given the clouds the most natural look that I could have ever asked for. I use set number 11, which is here. And all you do is install it, it takes two seconds. Open it, this appears. You just press the cloud set you want. You can see there's a small preview. I have a feeling they've got like ENB or something on in these screenshots. Because in, in, in Flight Sim anyway, especially for me, they don't look this overexposed. They actually look amazingly natural. Um, so yeah, I use number 11. I've tried a, a few other sets. 10's pretty good, um, but 11 is the one that I've stuck with. So. You, put, you literally click 11, press install, and it comes up with this little screen. Now, you can install it in whichever one you want. I think now with the update, I've not updated it because the update wasn't, they, there wasn't any performance updates in the, in the newer update. It was just, I think, compatibility for Steam, uh, FSX Steam Edition, sorry, and um, some of the like, bug fixes with the installer, but I had no problems with it, so I just figured that I might as well not bother with the installation of the, the service pack just yet until there's a bug fix. So for us all here, FSX, you can choose P3D, P3D uh, version 2 and, and onwards from that. It gives you the directory. Um, I have enabled DX uh, DXT5, DirectX 5 textures uh, by clicking that. And then you can't really do HDR for uh, for FSX, so that's that. And then you just press OK, and it's that simple. There you go, done and then you can press OK to launch. I don't do that because I run Flight Sim through Borderless Window, so that's, uh, that's a little bit different. But yeah, so so that's the cards that I use. They, it comes with 16 sets. I use number 11. That's really it. I don't use Rex. Um, 
uh, anything else, just the clouds. For those of you that have watched my previous video about the Pablo Diaz V2 sky textures, that's something completely different. You can install those and this at the same time, they will run in harmony. There's no there's no issue with that. Also, if you have that sort of HD airport um, FSX default stuff, and I can't remember who made it, it's on Sim Market, that works as well. It doesn't overwrite anything, it will just they will work in harmony. Okay, so now that's out of the way, I shall move on to Active Sky and I'll show you my settings for that. Okay, so here's Active Sky and we are running build 5410, so make sure it's up to date. It's the latest one. It'll notify you when you uh when you launch Active Sky if you are uh, not using the correct mode. Now, I think for ease, so this doesn't go on for days, I'm going to leave my configuration in the description and all you need to do is place that in your app data and then hi-fi, sorry, app data roaming, hi-fi uh, folder. I'll leave the link underneath uh, to where you need to put it and then just load that in and it will work just fine for you. But essentially the only thing that I want to show you and concentrate on is two things, the visual fix options and the cloud options. The wind and the visibility stuff is still the same. Um, one thing that I've noticed is that forget the maximum cloud layers, just leave that at five forget the turbulence, leave that at default. Uh, prevent thunderstorms when CBs are reported. You should probably tick that, otherwise every time you go anywhere near CBs you're just going to see thunderstorms and that's pretty unrealistic. Um, the minimum cloud draw distance, now this is one that I've been in several discussions with people over. So by, by proxy I think it's set to like 90 or something, the default value is quite low. If you increase that value, you seem to get um, more, I, I wouldn't say I don't know. It, it it feels as if there are more varied types of clouds in the same area. It looks very strange. Like for example, if you look far in the distance, and and you look at the cloud types as they as they kind of scatter into the distance, um, it looks I don't know. It looks very very good. I can't explain what it looks like, but I have mine set to 120 as a minimum, and then the maximum is 140. Don't go past 140. Once you get past 140, you're really going to start to get hit by the FPS you see here. Use, uh, it says use values larger than 150 at your own risk. Uh, don't do it. I mean, I put mine to 250 and flights in my memory, so there's that. Um, so yeah, one, 120 for that, one, uh, 140 for that. Another thing is the enhanced overcast conditions. I think that was in the initial release, but they've improved it. And also you can um, put high detail thunder, uh, thunderstorm clouds in as well for when it's actually reported for thunderstorms, not when CBs are only reported. Second to this, okay, do you run the Aerosoft X, uh, the Aerosoft Airbus X, sorry, Aerosoft X lol, um, the Airbus X. If you do, you will notice, or you may notice, an issue with frame rates with the weather radar. Uh, I did from the outset, um, as soon as this uh, was included in the new service pack from Active Sky. If you use Opus or, or whatever the other weather engines are, then you probably don't have this problem, but I do. Um, this repeating overcast texture fix pattern looks great on paper when you actually load into the sim it looks incredible it gives you the most realistic overcast I've ever seen in my life and it works well on frames with with stuff like the PMDG and Majestic and all that that's fine for some reason in the Airbus it absolutely cripples it it really does I'm getting like 10 12 frames and in the NGX I'm getting like 30 um, it's something to do with how the weather radar interprets the data coming from a repeating overcast texture I'm not quite sure how it all works, but anyway, if you turn this off, you just untick it. If you have your sim uh, started, you need to restart it. Um, then uh, you know that will fix it. Also, the cloud pot fix uh, they've they've enhanced, so that that's good. Uh, but yeah, this is, is a big thing. I I fly the Airbus quite a bit, but when I'm not flying it, I make sure I put this back on because it looks really damn nice. If you watch. Um, uh, have I made a video with it yet? Yeah, I don't think I've, I have. I do have footage somewhere of, of it uh, when you're descending through overcast and if you notice normally on FSX if you look from the sky down you can't see a thing but when you descend below the overcast and look up you can see straight through it. It's very very strange. That fixes it but the problem is it kills the Airbus X so um, apparently they're not going to do anything about that. That's just one of those things that you have to get on with. And it, you can, it, it does get rid of the FPS issues when you when you get rid of it. So, oh well, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, apart from that, that's uh, that's the only two things that I've changed. Um, 
as, as far as making it look better make sure if you're on that sim uh, you have the uh, the wake turbulence off completely otherwise you'll get flipped over on final there isn't really much more to say about it oh the wing fade effect of course yeah if you fly through um, if you fly through cloud and stuff like that the wing will disappear into the cloud that was there uh, from version one but they never had a uh, uh, a checkbox to turn it on or off. I'm not quite sure why they would do that. Is it a performance issue? I'm not sure. Um, but all of these, I'll leave my config below and uh, I guess that will uh, suppress all of the myths that I'm doing something crazy with my flight sim. Another thing people ask is why my flight sim is so dark, to which the answer is I have no idea. Me sitting in front of my screen looking at my flight simulator, um, I don't actually see it to be that dark but yet when I watch my videos back and on YouTube it's dark it must just be the way I capture my videos uh, so it looks better than it actually looks in real life which is very very strange anyway I hope that was somewhat useful a bit of a short video uh, but if you have any questions just leave them below and yeah it's it's good now Active Sky is getting better and they're updating it more frequently which is always good and of course the uh, the Rex clouds go hand in hand and it all looks exceptional Right, enough said, enough rambling, thank you for watching, again any questions post below, and until, what are we on, it is Wednesday until Friday, um, when the next video is coming out, I shall see you all later, take care guys, goodbye.